Good morning, I'm Jamie Curtis. And I'm Hudson Schulman. Welcome to the first Lincoln Sports Zone produced by the new second semester class. I am so excited to be anchoring this first show with you, Hudson, and to cover all the spring sports. I am too, Jamie. This is going to be a fun semester. For the main event today, we have the highlights of the girls' varsity basketball team. Anytime the game ends with the nets being cut down, it deserves to be our main event. And Jamie has the highlights. The Lady Lions tip off at home against Grove City to fight for the OCC title. Clark Jackson steals the ball and pulls up for a mid-range jumper. The Lions lead 2-0. Late in the first, Jackson dishes the ball to Layla Marshall and she goes in for the floater. Lions trail by one. Now in the second quarter, Emily Marzen sinks it in for the three. She puts the Lions up 15-13. To end the half, Marshall fights in the paint to put up two. The Lions are down 27-26. Beginning of the third, Lachey Berry hits the three. The Lions gain the lead 28-24. Now in the fourth, Jackson drives through the paint and puts it up. Keeping the lead 37 to 35. To end the game strong, Peyton Bethea drains the corner three. Our Lady Lions win 59 to 52 to clinch the OCC title. I feel great. Um, it's our fourth year winning, and honestly, it's not expected. We have a hard league. We have hard competitors against us. So winning four years in a row is a really good feat. It, it feels good. It's a blessing. Um, it's a humbling experience for us to be able to go out here and win four uh, straight OCC championships. Um, it's just a blessing, and um, we're just grateful. Thanks. Now to the boys, where a win over Grove City would clinch at least a share of the OCC Ohio Division title. So we sent Sage Fogel all the way to Grove City, and she was courtside for all the action. Lions taking on Grove City for at least a share of the OCC title. First quarter, Brandon Ivory gets a hard screen from Dylan Scott as he dribbles right side and hits Xavier Rogers for the three. Lions down 9-4. Still in the first, the Lions need to put up points on the board. KJ Renault dribbles into the middle and passes out to Nas Turner for the three. Lions down 13-8. Going into the second, Turner dribbles inside the paint and goes up for a layup. Lions down 17-13. Lions erase their half deficit with a middle range hook shot from Mo Charlton. Lions lead 27-25. Later in the third, Rogers on a fast break and he scores. Lions lead 30 to 25. Rogers passes to Luke Murray for a three-point jump shot. Lions 34 to 29 at the end of the third. After spreading the offense, Elijah King hands it off to Ronald, takes a dribble and shoots for three. Lions keeping it up 37 to 32. Starting the fourth, Xavier dribbles right side and gets through the tough contact for the and one. Tied 41 to 41. Later on in the fourth, Rogers takes it into the paint for the layup, tied 43 to 43. Now, in the final seconds of the game, Renault steps to the line and makes the clutch free throw to give the Lions the 44 to 43 win. Thanks, guys. Our boys' varsity basketball team is having a very successful season as they're in contention of winning the OCC title for the third consecutive year. One piece of that success is the leadership from this year's senior class. Our Landon Shear caught up with the boys' basketball captain, Luke Murray, on this year's success. Here's one minute with Luke Murray. Now, I'm here with Luke Murray, boys' basketball captain. How are you doing today, Luke? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Now, you guys have a, at least a share of the title of the OCC. You guys are, I think, 8-1 and one in you guys' conference. Um, you guys got picked north this Friday. What are some of the things you guys are doing where you can get the outright title? Uh, yeah, you know, we're just working hard in practice, locking in on pick north. Uh, we had a hard-fought win over Grove City last Friday, and, you know, outright title mean a lot. It'd be the fourth straight year, and to do that after no one thought we were going to do it this year, it would uh, really mean a lot. Now, I know you guys lost seven seniors this year uh, just to the past class. Uh, what do you get, what's it like being, having to be a captain and one of the only seniors on the team with a young team? Uh, yeah, it means a lot to be captain. You know, it means you're recognized by your peers as a, as a leader and someone with experience from the group. And, you know, all the guys have come and bought in, make it easy to be a captain on this team. You know, we've really just come together and locked in on a goal of winning OCCs and, you know, trying to win districts and there. The and then I know you guys also got the sixth seed in the tournament. You guys uh, can end up playing on Tangier Liberty, the two seed in the district finals. You guys, again, have a young team. What's it going to be like for those young guys to play in a varsity tournament for the first time? Yeah, you know, it's going to be a little challenging because some of them don't, don't, a lot of them don't have varsity experience, but the tournament experience, but, you know, they're ready for the challenge. Like, they've been ready for the challenge all year, so we're going to step up and 
they've always made plays down the stretch when it mattered, and I know we'll make enough plays and be able to win some games. All right, well, good luck with the rest of the season. Now let's head back to the sports desk. Thanks, Landon. The hockey team is preparing for the state tournament after a busy weekend to end their regular season. First, the hockey team competed in the Blue Jackets Cup last weekend, and after securing a first round bye, they won Friday night in a hard fought game against Olentangy Orange, 4 2. Scoring for the Lions were Tony Dejanov with two goals, Nate Highland and Trey Martin each added a goal. On Saturday, they faced a skilled Dublin Tyrone team in the finals, and they lost 4 1. Nate Highland was the lone scorer for the Lions. Speaking of hockey, our hockey team plays in the first round of state Saturday at 3.30 p.m. against Beaver Creek at the Ice House. Our Ian Phillips is with Captain Nate Hyland to preview this weekend for the latest edition of One Minute With. I'm Ian Phillips and I'm here with Kahana Hockey Captain Nate Hyland. Nate, how has your season gone to this point? Um, the season's gone extremely well. We are back-to-back -back Blue Division champions and have one of the best records in like Kahana history. Um, we made it out of the first round in uh, the CVJ Cup, which we've only other done like one other time, so it's kind of extremely well. How have you guys been preparing for the playoffs? Um, so like today we have film and we're going to watch film over Beaver Creek, who we play this weekend, and uh, just at practices we just go over stuff that Beaver Creek has done and what we can improve on. So you're the team captain, and how have you been able to change the morale in the locker room from previous years? Um, so this year it's been pretty easy since a lot of us have played together in like past years before high school hockey and we haven't had many problems like last year we had like a pretty big issue but this year like everything's been good. The coaches like the communication just a lot better. Thanks Nate. Now I'll send it back to the sports desk. Thanks Ian. Now to swimming. Both our boys and girls teams are fresh out of the pool following their district competition at Upper Arlington on Saturday. Many Lincoln athletes will move on to this week's districts at Ohio State. Here are Gehanna Lincoln's top finishers from sectionals. Good luck at OSU Lions. Continue in swimming. The boys swim team has been on a roll and working hard to break their PRs and to continuing to get better within their relays. One relay team has been extremely successful this season and that is the 200 medley and 200 freestyle relay team with Cole Farbizo, Josh Riegler, Eli Riegler and Preston Cooper. Our very own Aubrey Tomsic has an inside scoop on how the boys have been preparing for districts. That is the recognizable sound of water. The boys swim team has been working hard in the pool and out to focus on moving forward, going into sectionals and onward. We're preparing by doing a uh, little s sprint stuff on some short rest. We normally do about 6,000 yards and today we did 44 and we've been slightly going down. We are increasing our mobility and stretching every day, every night so that we can do really well and keep our muscles warm for the time coming. Most of the swimmers are doing about 50% of their normal workload at this time. It's a lot more uh, fast stuff with a lot of rest and just kind of fine tuning things. As their practices have been slightly changing, one thing has stayed the same for the boys and that is their strong connection within their relay team. So it starts off with the person who goes first obviously. Having a good first leg is really good and gives a lot of momentum. Good relay exchanges, no DQing, just making sure we have everything right, our turns, our stroke obviously. You want to make sure you support each other and just get each other hyped to race, you gotta win and just get going. However, the relationships weren't always as strong. They had to build chemistry in order to be successful. Having this strong bond now creates confidence in the guys to go out and compete as fast as they can for each other. 
At the start of the season, we were not the best as a relay, and we weren't really set together in what we were going to swim. But now I feel like we know what we're going to swim, we know how we're going to swim it, and we know we can go fast and be the best out there. We've come along really well. Um, our chemistry has gotten way better this year rather than last year. We do a lot of team activities this year. I think we went from a mediocre relay team to someone who could really go to states or even farther. And we've definitely gotten more consistent, and we have some goals that we think we're going to accomplish and I hope we do that. Despite the challenges the boys may face along the way, they have set goals for themselves and their team in order to rise above these obstacles. Their focus before the season comes to a close is achieving the best times possible, perfecting their skills and continuing to qualify. Our goal is to make states in the 200 for relay and the medley relay which is, you know, it's really fast this year and it's going to be difficult but we've been striving for this all year and we've worked really hard. Getting our technique down is really what we want and just going fast. It would be to make it to states. That's been our goal maybe since even last season. We've had our eyes set on it. Even getting there and just being there would be amazing for us. Definitely making it to states that has been a dream goal for a while. Last year we were pretty close and so hopefully this year we'll at least make it in one. Well the end goal is to qualify as many people as we can to districts and then next week to qualify as many on to states and that's kind of always the goal get as many to the next level as we can. As they've achieved their first goal sectionals they aren't finished yet because they are dreaming of something much bigger. Swimming at districts and eventually states. This is Aubrey Tomsick in the zone. Thanks, Aubrey. The boys are not the only ones breaking barriers this season. In fact, one athlete has already succeeded their expectations. Campbell Payton broke the school record last weekend in the 200 free. Cole Farbizo has one minute with our new school record holder. I am here with junior captain Campbell Payton. So, Campbell, recently I heard that you guys went to sectionals at Upper Arlington. So, how did you and the girls do? We did really amazing. It was a great start to our postseason. Um, I'm really proud of all the girls and how we did. I think we all can improve this coming week. But um, for those of us who's finish, whose season finished, I think it went really well, and everyone should be proud of their accomplishments. Great. So um, I recently heard that you got a school record in the girls' 200 freestyle. So um, how do you think, how does that feel? Um, it was really surprising to me. I had no idea when I finished um, to the wall that I had broken the school record. Um, I looked up at my time and then I got out of the pool and I was super surprised by my time. Um, and then all my friends and teammates were cheering for me and I was a little surprised and then they had let me know that I had broken the school record and it was just a really cool feeling to like be surprised by that. So knowing that you already broke the school record, how does that feel going into districts and hopefully if you make states? Um, it makes it boosts my confidence for sure. Um, it was it was really cool, and I hope that we can all continue to improve as a team. Um, I definitely think that we have the potential, and I think that it'll be a really great rest of the season. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Cole. Hudson, you won't guess who's joining us in the zone today. Jamie, I know exactly who it is. It's our very own Sebastian Tadako. How are you doing today, Sebastian? I'm doing great. I have interesting insight on two teams. The girls' bowling team scored a 24-26 in total pinfall to win the conference roll-offs. Delaney led Gehanna with a 440 to win the tournament MVP, and Lacey Holden finished second. Speaking of Delaney, can you imagine coming so close to your dream but coming up short? Well, I can't imagine how that hard that would be. And that's what our Delaney experienced last year. She almost became a state champion last year, but didn't quite achieve her goal. Our Mackenzie Kemp has a story of a team and an individual who are determined to reach the top this season. Becoming a state champion is every athlete's dream. Bowler Delaney Rossetti came within 21 pins, making her dream come true. For me, individually, it went really well. I finished third with a 644 series. Um, but as a team, it was kind of an, an odd ending for us because we didn't make the cut to the final eight, which I feel like was very expected of, of us given the season that we had. But, you know, it was a very bittersweet feeling, doing great individually, but um, not doing great as a team. 
Which makes sense because the Lions were back-to-back -back defending state champs from 2020 and 2021 and finished outside the top 10 as a team. She was a big contributor to our team. We didn't do as well as we wanted to, but we finished, I think it was 11th, and she was one of our top contributors to it, so she did really well. Since coming up short last season, Delaney has been working harder than ever to make sure that this season she becomes a state champ, and she has definitely put in the extra work to earn that. Literally every day I'm doing something related to training, um, whether it's working out when I don't have practice or practicing every day or researching, learning, watching videos, learning from other people. My life is consumed by, bo by bowling right now, which is great because I just like, I have a goal in mind and I'm going to achieve it. She works really hard on her own and then, you know, we're just trying to you know, keep her focused on the right things, keep her head in the game, which she does a good job of. Individual success is a driving force for Delaney. But as the leader of the Lincoln Bowling Team, her own success directly impacts the team's ability to reach its own goal of a team championship. And everyone understands that. Both of our goals is to at least finish better than we did at States last year. We, do, we obviously want to win. That's our top goal. It's been our goal since the beginning of the season. I would hope that her goal is to lead the team to, to States because that's our overall goal is to get everybody, you know, go there as a team. So obviously my goal this season is to win States as an individual and as a team. I know as a team we can get there, but individually I saw that I, I was this close last year. I know I can do it again. Win player of the year would be great. Um, average over 200. I just like little individual goals that I have, but I'm mainly focused about the team. Every bowler has one goal in mind, and they believe it's achievable with the amount of preparation they're all putting in. I'm Mackenzie Kemp in the zone. Thanks, Mackenzie. The boys' wrestling team is preparing for the state tournament as well, and they had an impressive showing over the weekend. The team placed fourth overall at their All-North tournament. Some special highlights were credited to Musa Jala and Javance Lewis, who took second place, Hayden Thompson and Jalen Sanchez, who took third, and finally Charlie Foster and Jaden Lewis with fifth. The Lions are preparing for their match against Pickering North tonight. This will be an interesting match of the season, and we wanted to see what their thoughts are about the upcoming match. Here's Musa Jala. For tonight, I'm really just excited to, you know, get the duels out of the way because even though they're fun, you know, it's a great team experience. I'm ready to go into sectionals and get the postseason started. That we usually have till 6. I'd like to stay till around 8, go over video, and, you know, just practice a little more, get my technique down in preparation. Thanks, Musa. That's all from me. Back to Jamie and Hudson at the sports desk. Thanks, Sebastian. Members of our track teams are not waiting until outdoor season to smash school records. On Saturday, our boys and girls track team competed at Spire Institution. Camden Bentley crushed her PR in the 60 meter hurdles, not only setting our new school record for the event, but also a state record. Camden is the defending state champion in the 100 hurdles and a two-time state champ in the 300 hurdles. Congrats go out to sophomore Owen Toller, who broke the indoor 100, 800 school record with a time of 156.6. Owen is currently the number three ranked sophomore in the United States, and he has his sights set on the state indoor track meet. It gave me a lot of confidence for the rest of the season, and yeah, it just helped my teammates too. Like, I'm pushing them, they're pushing me, and the goals for the rest of the season would probably be perform well at the state meet and just try to keep getting better every day. Thanks, Owen. This year, the boys indoor track team is preparing for their outdoor season by working out in the hallways. And for some of the guys, they're going all year long with football and track. Our Darius Stuckey has some insight on some of our dual sport athletes. Here's Darius. It's winter time, and many believe it's the off season, although that's not the case for dual sport athletes who play football and run track. These two sports end up helping hand in hand when some are ready to compete in the fall or move on to the next level. So you know it's pretty tough on the body, so especially with the endurance aspect and having to be in shape. From that first and fourth quarter, it only gets more in depth and more contact and everything like that. Track is just like a, it depends on what adventure you're running, so it's not like really draining how football was. Endurance wise, it's, it's just like a change in type of endurance. The most a play can last like five to seven seconds. Using your legs overall in a different way and a different type of technique that you will use while you play uh, football. While these athletes use endurance and stamina from football to prepare for their indoor track season, they've had to utilize Lincoln Halls due to the absence of a track, field house, and stadium. And it's helped them work on self-independence and taking care of their bodies. Something that I do during indoor performance meets is hydrating. 
48 hours before, you know. Our, my coach always says, you know, you eat right, sleep right. What you do with your bodies matters. Really just like getting back in shape for one. Indoors, like practice a lot, sprinting workouts, kind of like recovering, doing stuff like that, getting ready for outdoor. Overall, we use a school to better ourselves with just knowing that we're getting faster, being able to fix our technique while running. While the guys are preparing for this upcoming outdoor season, they have many goals in mind to help them get where they want to be. It's to win a team title championship. That's what all teams work for. But Gahanna has been known for the relays on the boys' side. I also like to see individual events that we win. Win stays as a team. Uh, we came in second last year. The goal is coming first as a team. Win it all. It's time to win it all this year because we already know we could do it in relays. Now we all got to make it in individuals to win it all. And still being able to build that endurance and being in shape 24-7 year round, it was very good. And very There's a lot of work to be done, whether it's physical or mental. The team is ready for the challenge no matter where they are at. This is Darius Stuckey in the zone. Thanks, Darius. All Lincoln athletes dream of playing at the next level in college, and 11 of those athletes are making their dreams come true. National Signing Day just passed, and athletes were joined by their families and friends for a signing day event in our library. We spoke with some of our athletes about their decisions to play sports in college. It's just a really big relief to finally commit, basically because you can finally have everyone off your back asking you where you're going. Right off my chest. So. The recruiting process was super stressful, but I'm super excited to continue playing lacrosse in college. I just know that I had the support that I really needed, and I just I knew right away as soon as I started playing lacrosse that I wanted to play at the next level. Great committing. Um, overall, knowing that college is paid for. Being able to further the career I want to be, um, being able to do other majors but play the sport that I love. It's great doing it with my teammates. It's great for the support, knowing that I have a chance to have a ball come back and know that I made history here and I left history here. Thanks and congrats again. We have one final announcement for today, and that's a thank you to one of our coaches. Boys soccer head coach Matt Kovach is stepping away from his coaching duties. Our athletic director, Miss Harris, presented Coach Kovach with a plaque to thank him for all his dedication to all of the Lincoln soccer players. All right. I'm here with uh, Coach Kovach, who's been our head boys soccer coach for the past nine years. Uh, bittersweet moments uh, as he uh, decided to step away from the program, and uh, uh, it, it, it is bittersweet. And I say that because from the bottom of my heart and the community, you know, we're going to miss you so much and what you've done to lead the program over the years. You know, if you look at our boys soccer roster, that's over over 60 kids in a program each year as we've been able and fortunate enough to um, host three uh, level teams. And, and under his leadership, we've been able to do that in the community, um, starting with our elementary age uh, athletes all the way up to high school with our cub camps and different things like that. Um, and under his tenure, he's got two OCC championships, two district championships, um, and we just couldn't be more proud of the direction our, our program has been uh, heading under uh, your leadership. So I wanted to present you with this plaque, Coach, um, and it says, an excellent coach is hard to find, difficult to part with, and impossible to forget. And, and we truly mean every word of that um, because we are going to miss you, um, just the impact that you've had on our kids and our families. Um, it, it was something special. And so I appreciate all that you've done for the program and for Gahanna Lincoln Athletics in the high school. So I wanted, wanted you to have this maybe hang in your classroom or somewhere at home so there's always a little piece of us with you. Um, and if you have a couple things or a couple items or things you could remember, what has been some of uh, your most fond memories uh, being head coach? Um, you know, I think you know, if you think of moments on the field, uh, you know, I immediately go to um, a big goal that was scored, uh, Nas Kristoff scoring the, the, the game-winning goal in the district championship in 2015 was such a cool moment. Um, but for me, I think the biggest thing I'll take away from the program is, is the memories of the relationships built with the players and with the, the families and the people of the community. Um, I've had tremendous support from administration during my time. I've had tremendous support from the community, the Gahanna soccer community, which, is, which has a very strong tradition. Um, and I've made so many relationships that that will certainly last a lifetime, and, and, and I'll cherish those forever. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Coach. We're going to miss you. We expect to see you still on the sidelines or, or in the stands supporting us. So thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Go Lions. Thanks again, Coach Kovach. Well, Lincoln, that's all the sports news we have for you today. We hope you've enjoyed this week's sports coverage from the second semester sports broadcasting class. And as always, Go, Go Lions! Lions.